This is Texans TV. Texans 360 is presented by BMW, the official luxury car of the Houston Texans. By TDECU, the official credit union of the Houston Texans. And by Caesars Rewards, for every way you play. We are ready to rock in Houston. Rock and roll. Another day, another dollar. Touchdown, Texans. Oh. <laughs> He's in rock and roll. Guess when you think you've seen it all, there's always something else. Let go, let go home, let go home. Welcome into Texans 360. We hope you are so well rested after that bye. I know I am. I know the Texans are. They've got their first one in the books. They're looking for their second. And we've got a big show for you tonight. We're going to get into Davis Mills, my football story. We've got Jerry Hughes. We've got Jalen Petrie. We've got Nick Casario. Who do we not have? That's really the question you should be asking. Do we have Lovey Smith, you ask? Why, yes, we do. Lovey Smith sat down with our very own Mark Vandermeer and John Harris to talk about this Texans team and what to expect. And joining us now in the Hyundai Texans radio studio, it's head coach Lovey Smith. Coach, back from the bye. Great yes. to see you. It's great to be back. Enjoyed the bye week, but it's great to get back into ball. Okay, so uh, let's just start here. I saw you wearing burnt orange over the weekend. <laughs> I knew this was coming up. Well, I, I did. And you look good in burnt orange, coach. And you picked the right day. I imagine they want you back every week now because they won. Well, I'm a, you know, I'm a product of Texas high school football. Whenever the flagship university invites you and your wife to come down, um, you kind of loved it. A gracious host and uh, saw good football, so we had a blast this weekend. All right, so coach, back from the bye, what did you learn about yourselves during the time off? I know it wasn't much time off. You just skipped a weekend of play, and I know everybody got a chance to recharge a little bit, but what stands out to you after these first games and as you embark against the Raiders and beyond? And you're right. It, it, you do get to the bye week and you really look at everything, but we've been doing that all along. Mm -hmm. And I think we've made adjustments each week. First off, we start the season offensively. Hey, we're a running football team. We didn't run the ball as well and as much as we needed to early on. That has changed. Uh, the guys on our focus on who who our guys offensively want to get the ball to. I think we've done that. And just knowing everybody's roles, you know, the role that they have. You know. Coach, what can you tell the listeners about how you set up game planning with your position coaches? Because you can't coach every player on the team as the head coach. You coach the position coaches and they coach the players. How does all that work? What can you tell us about that, the process and putting the whole thing together going into Sunday? Well, I think it goes, you go all the way back. I mean, for me as a head football coach, I mean, we have, you know, Frank Ross, we have Pep Hamilton. We've long talked our philosophy on how we're going to play special team, our philosophy on how we're going to play offensive football, and of course me being in the league position with the defense, you get that out of the way early on. From there, you, you trust the men that you have in charge. All right, the Amogee Bank Ask Coach question of the week, and this, this relates to family. Of course, we know about Miles, and you've talked about Marianne right here on this uh, very radio show. Uh, Coach, where does it come from? You have such a sense of family and wanting the family to be together. You've talked about your grandchildren. When did this start? And just discuss the strength of this for you and your family. Well, I'm, you know, like a lot of times I talk about Texas. That's all I know is that in the family I came from, you know, my great grandma lived to be 103, you know, so it, that's all I've known in my life. Family, uh, Sunday dinners, family, everything is about family. I have a lot of relatives that love the Houston Texans, but I just assume that's kind of how it is everywhere. All right, Coach, thanks a lot for joining us. Good luck Sunday. Thank you very much. Great stuff from the head coach. You know what he likes to see? Takeaways. And this team's gotten quite a few throughout the first five games of the season. Jalen Petrie against the Bears. His first, not one, but two career interceptions. And then Jerry Hughes against his former team, the Colts, in week one. He got a takeaway as well. Let's see if this team can keep the takeaway train going. Our very own John Harris breaks him down on the Telestrator. The signing of Jerry Hughes has been a revelation for the Texans through the first five weeks. And it paid off early in the season in week one against the Indianapolis Colts. Let's take a look right here. The Colts have a really wonderful screen set up here. They're in 12 personnel, so they got two tight ends here. 
right over here, you can see Mo Alley Cox and, and Kylan Granson right there. Mo Alley Cox is gonna come over here and set a bunch over here. And you got Hines, Pittman, and then Mo Alley Cox is gonna be over here. So you got this bunch right over here. Jonathan Taylor in the backfield, expecting run, 12 personnel with Taylor, that's pretty much a run. So Matt Ryan sends Hines in motion, fakes the jet sweep, fakes the handoff, man, this is so good because you got linebackers screaming in here, rushers coming hard. You've got zone coverage, cover three, three deep coverage, everybody getting to their zones. And really out here you're going, okay, it looks pretty good. We're in zone coverage. Man, the only thing we don't want them to do is run a screen. Uh-oh, that's exactly what the Colts do. Taylor's gonna fake, pop out here. Now, I want you to look right there. There, there, and there's the receiver. He does, he's gonna have some blocking, but if this ball gets over to Jonathan Taylor, that's probably gonna be six. Jerry Hughes saved the touchdown on this play. And this is where veteran understanding comes in. Jerry's the rusher right here. So you see Jerry right, Jerry's right there. All right, I can pause it. He's right there, he's been rushing against Braden Smith, but he realizes as he's getting through Smith, that I can't get there. So once you know, okay, I can't get there, you have the quarterback in your sights, get your hands up. I don't think Jerry knew this was a screen until right there. He has a feeling like he sees Taylor leak out. See that right foot right there. He plants that right foot and realizes, hey, something's up. That's when he redirects and he's able to get a paw up there, tip it to himself, and then take off like the running back he used to be. Let's take a look at this view where you can see Jerry a little better. Jerry's right here, coming against Braden Smith. So he's gonna rush. Uh, I can't get there, wait a second, screen, and then redirect. He does this about as well as anybody could possibly do it. Rushes, being aware. Okay, wait, Taylor, oh boy, that something's there. Drops, picks it off, and off to the house. Man, I don't know where we would have been without that play in the game against the Colts, because that's seven going the other way. Jerry Hughes saved the touchdown there in that week one tie to the Indianapolis Colts. Taylor fakes the give, here's pressure, and here's a pick as Ryan throws it to his right. Texans have it at the 42-yard line. Jerry Hughes, welcome home. It's been really fun to watch Jalen Petrie grow as a rookie in this Texans defense. We're going to go to week two when he came up with the first of his two interceptions right here. And this is a tremendous play. This is different than the other interception. The other interception, he got some help in the fact that it was Tampa 2. So he had some help from a middle runner down the field. The Texans play a little different coverage here. They're gonna play a cover two on this side. So this looks like normal Tampa two. We're gonna play quarters on this side. So quarter, quarter, half coverage, which has been played for a lot of times, but it's a nice change up to what the Texans typically do with Tampa two. So this is second 11 play. Bears have trips out here. And Fields is gonna see J.O. sitting low. So he's gonna think, man, I got commit right down to see him here. I got that. If he's sitting low, I got that. Well, what he didn't anticipate was Petrie's range getting over to make this play. So you see them in the bunch, you get motion to a two by two. It actually gets in the backfield, that's Mooney. A little play action fake. They're gonna play halves over here. So really, the field is split here. Cover two over here, cover four over here. And Jalen's gotta basically play on top of both these routes. So he's in perfect position. What I mean by on top, he's gotta be at a point where he can make a play there or he can make a play there, and he's perfect. He is absolutely perfect because as that ball is going to commit, he makes a great break, and then he's the one that ball finds instead of Cole Komet. This is wonderful by Jalen Petrie, the way that he read that play, was in perfect position to be over the top of two receivers and then make a play on the ball, his first interception of his career, and it won't be his last. Backs motion, and now Fields throwing downfield over the middle. It's picked off. Petrie with the pick. Pick number one of his career. Django with Jerry time. I'm Drew Doherty, and this is Jerry Hughes. He's a defensive end for the Houston Texans. He's leading the team with four sacks. He's from here. He's Sugarland proud and played his college ball at TCU. Hey. You were on a squad your last year there. But let's talk yeah. about this. We're going to play some Jenga. You doing all right? I'm doing all right, man. Doing great. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. Let's this is very, active. very competitive. I'm I trying like to get it. win number one. Oh. I haven't beat you guys yet, so 
You're up. Like this game is all about strategy. You got to know mm -hmm. which block to grab and without touch too. teetering it all over. All right. Which teammate could play on the other side of the ball? Mm. Oh, man. That's tough, man. We got a lot of athletes on defense. I mean, guys who make big plays. I mean, Dan's got his hand on the ball. Sting, the same thing. I got to go with a wild card here just because I hear a lot of him playing it in uh, high school back in the day. Rasheem Green. I'd believe that, like yeah. a tight end or something? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he tells me he, he has the speed. He says he's hit some of the top times. He said he blocked the punt in Seattle, hit 18 miles an hour. So if we got a defensive end moving that fast, that'd be a scary sight. That's a good one. Ball, Rasheem you know? Green, you've been, uh, you've been playing possum on us. We haven't heard about this. We're going to make things interesting. There we go. Oh, no. Let's see, if oh. I can, see if I can get you to, to Jenga, is it? What's the best concert you've ever been to? I'm gonna have to go with Drake. Drake came to Buffalo one time at the Key Bank Stadium. That was probably, that's the only concert I've been to, I'm gonna be honest with you. My wife, whenever she gets the opportunity, Beyonce came here one time, I kind of wanted to raise my hand, but I was like, <laughs> let, the, let, let the ladies have that one. But I was like, eh, you know, he didn't want to be the only guy <laughs> out there. Fair enough, fair enough. They hit a Taylor Swift concert too, so I kind of oh, set that one out, that's I know. A, yeah, that's a big one, one, yeah. That love letter out one. Lots right. of estrogen. Oh, man. Man, we, we gotta find some spots. There we yep, go. Yep. Oh, what's a good one? Who has the best hair on the team? Oh man, that's a tough one right there. As he runs his hand right, through right. his hair. <laughs> through the curls. I gotta go with the young guy, Troy. I don't know if you've seen his hair. It is incredible. I mean, yeah. the way he hits people on the field, you gotta love it. Yeah. And the fact that he can take care of that hair too, all at the same time being aggressive and looking good. Total package. Oh man, that's a defensive player's dream. You can't say much to nose tackles and fullbacks. I mean, they do a lot of the dirty work. They so. do. Oh! oh. Dang it. Well, OG. the player streak continues. Yeah. Jerry Hughes, congrats. Sure. Thanks, man. Jingle with Jerry, man. Thanks for having me, bro. Welcome back. Texans 360 rolls on. Gentlemen, is Nick Casario. He's got a lot to say about this team. He's got a lot to say about this next head coach the Texans are about to face. Josh McDaniels, the two go back many, many years, especially from their time at the Patriots. And Nick Casario has got to be happy with what these rookies have done so far. Let's hear what the general manager had to say. Here in the Hyundai yeah. Texans radio studio, visiting with general manager Nick Casario. Nick, back from the bye. How's it going? Good morning, fellas. Good to be here. Nick, during the bye, I know there's always talk about self-scout and all that kind of stuff. As you went through and self-scouted, and did you have an opportunity to see games, go watch players? How did you spend the bye week? Yeah, a little bit of everything. Um, you know, did some housekeeping on kind of our team. I think it's important always to kind of take inventory of your team, where you are, whether it's players, individual players. I think more than anything, trying to stay ahead on some of the preparation relative to the next opponents. And then the information from a college standpoint is very fluid, and that continues. And just try, trying to stay as up to date as possible on that. How much has the continuity on the offensive line paid off? The fact that starting in week two, when Scotty stepped in at Denver, you've had that same offensive line for the last four games. That's always probably the one group. If you can have sort of the same five guys on the field, I mean, it helps everybody. They can work together. I just think there, there's so much communication that goes on literally each snap in the span of two to three seconds. So from the mic identification and then getting that information from the center to the guard, the guard to the tackle, and the tackle to the tight end if there's pass protection involved. So the more you have a sense for that person next to you and the more you've worked with that individual, you would think it's going to be beneficial to everybody involved. Thoughts about the Raiders. What do you see from the Raiders? Yeah, really a lot of high-end talent. This is a very talented team. Jacobs is kind of a, underneath the surface, quietly one of the better backs in the league, and I think you saw that on display in a Kansas City game. Uh, really good quarterback. You know, Derek's been um, as consistent a quarterback and as durable a quarterback as any in the league. And Devontae has been one of the best receivers in the league for, you know, a number of years now. And, you know, we're going to certainly have our, our work cut out for us come Sunday. Nick, thanks a lot for joining us. Good luck. Thanks, guys. Welcome back to the Ford Studio. Quarterback Davis Mills, he's in his second year. You remember him well last year. The Texans drafted him in the third round. Well, now he's coming off his first win. Hopes to build on that because the Texans have a pretty busy slate. They've got 12 straight games now. The bye week is out of the way. But as far as Davis is concerned, his football story started a long time ago. He sat down and shared it all with us, starting from his days in Georgia. I grew up in uh, Duluth, Georgia, probably 40 minutes northeast of Atlanta. 
Started playing football when I was six years old. Played through pretty much my whole life. Always grew up in a really competitive environment. Both my older sisters, they ended up going to college to play tennis. Chasing their heels my whole childhood, trying to compete and be the best at everything I did. Fortunately, growing up in football, we had some really good coaches who uh, were former NFL players, so they were sharing us a lot of really good football tips from a young age, and I was able to take that and kind of apply it to my own game. I went to Greater Atlanta Christian in Norcross, Georgia. Um, we were really good every year. Um, never won a state championship, but we were really close the three years I started, sophomore through senior year. Davis Mills on the season, a 6'4", 200-pound senior, has thrown for 2,730 yards, 34 touchdowns, and amazing just one interception. He's a guy that has impressed us every chance we've had to see him. Scout.com ranks him as the number one quarterback in the country. Mills attended the Elite 11 camp this summer, a gathering of the country's top 11 quarterbacks. When we saw Davis Mills at the Charlotte Regional, the Regional for him was just another workout. I think it was about when I was in seventh grade or so, I saw kids in my high school that were getting college offers and making it to the next level. So I figured kind of at that point that I had a shot. I just needed to keep progressing the way I was and everything else would work itself out. The recruiting pitch is a little different. It's more of go enjoy the process, look at all the schools, and then compare them back to here because I know they'll be on top most of them. So a little more free for the uh, player. I chose to go to Stanford out of high school. Um, felt like it was the best fit for myself, uh, football-wise and academically. They're one of the best schools in the country and still are, so I felt like it was a really easy decision. So during your recruiting process, what was it about Stanford that really just stuck out to you and made them different from other schools? The combination between both academics and football, they're the best of both worlds. We took kind of the standard and how we set the tone at Stanford very seriously, so it taught me a lot of good things in terms of work ethic and holding yourself to a high standard and holding your teammates accountable. Mills, touchdown, Stanford! Davis Mills, a perfect ball. Keeper from the quarterback, foot race, and Davis Mills will win it! Mills to the end zone, caught for the touchdown! When it got up to draft night, I really had no clue where I'd end up. Hey, Davis. Hey, how are you? How you doing, man? I'm doing, doing great. Great, where are you at? I'm just at home with my family right now. Nice, pretty quiet. It is. We've Stop. muted the right. TV and everything. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, all right. We're gonna uh, we're gonna turn a pick in here in a minute, and uh, we're gonna make you a uh, Houston Texan. It was a dream come true when I got that phone call. You kind of sat there for a second and allowed yourself to take in the moment. Uh, it's everything that you thought of when you were a little kid, finally getting that phone call that you're on an NFL team. Fortunately, the Texans picked me, and I'm extremely happy where I ended up. Out of the end zone and caught touchdown Houston my advice to my younger self would be the little saying it's never as bad as you think it is and it's never as good as you think it is just stay humble in everything that you do and all the results come from hard work on the front end so just put your head down and get to work Texan 360 is presented by Comcast by Papa John's Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. And by Ticketmaster, the official ticket marketplace of the Houston Texans. Texans 360 rolls on, and I know everyone is excited to see what these rookies have done on the field. Jalen Petrie, we heard a lot about him this offseason. First team reps really early on, and of course, a day one starter here with the Houston Texans. Didn't take him long to get his first one and two interceptions, a sack, passes defense, fumble recovery, you name it, he's got it. And I had a chance to sit down with the Texans' second round pick out of Baylor this week. Take a look. It's the Deep Slant 101 presented by Xfinity. My guest this week, Jalen Petrie. Jalen, coming off the bye, first of all, how was it? What did you do? Anything exciting? Yeah, I actually got my high school jersey retired. You did? My week, so, you know, it was a pretty chill bye week, but got to, you know, spend some time at my high school, you know, talked to the team and, you know, saw a lot of my old teachers and teammates. So it was real good to, you know, get back to Stafford. 
How about for yourself? I mean, a quarter of the games in the books. I mean, when you look back at how your NFL career has started, what have you thought so far where you started to, to where you are now, where you've improved, where you'd like to get better? Yeah, I've seen some some improvements, a lot of things that I still think I can work on. Um, but overall, I feel like it's, it's been great. You know, the coaches, my teammates, everybody has welcomed me in and made me feel, like I said, very welcome and um, allowed me to be myself. So, you know, I'm very thankful for that. And, you know, it's been fun so far. You know, I want to continue to build on those first five games and continue to get better for my teammates. A lot of people have talked about just you on the field. Joe Dana, your safeties coach, just talked about your poise, how you're so calm throughout the game. Do you Are you a calm guy on the field? Do you, do you have nerves when you're out there? Uh, surprisingly, no. I honestly... I feel like everybody says yes, but for some reason, you just don't seem super nervous. Yeah, I there. honestly don't get nervous anymore. The m most nervous I am during the week is in practice when I'm seeing things for the first time um, because it mm. is it is new. But um, by the time I get to the game, my coaches and teammates, we've seen everything we need to see. And at that point, it's, it's really time to have fun. So, you know, I'm out there just chilling and enjoying, you know, the game atmosphere with my teammates. All right, so you grew up in Stafford, you went to Baylor, you've always played football in Texas. Was there ever a shot that you might leave Texas for college? I know you went to Baylor, but did you ever think that you'd be playing outside of Texas? Or was it more of a surprise that you stayed close to home? Um, I wouldn't say it was a surprise, but my dream school was LSU growing up. My, oh, okay. Both of my parents are from Louisiana, so um, we're big LSU fans. And yeah, that was where I wanted to go, but ended up not working out. And thankfully, I ended up at Baylor and it worked out well. Jalen, thanks so much for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you, too. Can't wait to see him rack up those interceptions and all those stats as the season rolls on. And you can see him in person as well as the rest of your Texans. They're going to be at home for the next two games. They're going to host the Titans for Kids Day after this week's game at Las Vegas. And then, of course, Thursday Night Football Battle Red Day against the Philadelphia Eagles. A very, very busy week for the Texans when they head home. So get your tickets, HoustonTexans.com slash tickets. That's going to do it for the show. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, go Texans. Thanks for watching and go Texans! Like, subscribe, and ring the bell for new content.